Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Joseph J. McAllister. Welcome you to another edition of Photography's Dark History. Prepare yourself for another dark and macabre true tale of terror. In the late Victorian era, colloidian photography was capable of stealing the souls of the Native American people, leaving their bodies to wander the open plains for eternity. Meanwhile, trapping their spirits on a sheet of Japan pig iron to be traded in shops throughout the West as spectacles and curiosities. Yes, the early photograph was a dark and mysterious thing, but does it have the power to kill? I propose to you the case of Marion Clover Hooper Adams. A Washington socialite whose interest in photography would bring about a dark fate. Marion Clover Hooper Adams, known to her friends simply as Clover, was an American socialite, high society hostess, and photographer in Washington, D.C. from 1843 through 1845. In 1883, Clover became interested in the burgeoning art of photography. She familiarized herself with chemicals and began her trade. Her photography consisted of portraits of politicians, family, friends, pets, and architectural photography. Besides photographs, Clover left behind meticulous notes that she kept in the dark room, listing photographs, dates, subjects, times, and exposures. Even though her photography was widely admired, her husband would not let her work professionally or publish her photography. Enter Henry Brooks Adams, Clover's husband. Clover and her husband were building a new home in Lafayette Square in Washington, D.C. when Clover's father, Dr. Hooper, died on April 13, 1885. Clover was grief-stricken and sank into a deep depression, the likes of which she would never recover. On a cold, dismal Sunday morning, December 1885. Clover was home alone at her house on H Street. Still grief-stricken from the death of her father, she grabbed a bottle of cyanide fixer from her dark room and headed upstairs to the bedroom. She opened up the bottle and drank the poisonous elixir. Later, her husband Henry entered the house, and when he could not locate her, he started searching. He found her lifeless body laying on the rug in front of the bedroom fireplace. Marion Clover Hooper Adams, age 42 at the time of her death. Another great photographer whose life ended at the height of their photographic career. The Evening Post reported that she died suddenly of heart paralysis to hide the awful truth from the social elite. In a letter dated 1886 to Clover's friend, Annie Palmer Fell, Henry Brooks Adams wrote, During the last 18 months, I have not had the good luck to attend my own funeral. But with that exception, I have buried pretty nearly everything I live for. In a letter to Henry Adams, John Hay wrote, Is it any consolation to remember her as she was? That bright, intrepid spirit, that keen, fine intellect, that lofty scorn for all that was mean, that social charm which made your house such a one as Washington never knew before and made hundreds of people love her as much as they admired her. After Clover's death, Henry commissioned the famous Adams Memorial, which features a bronze sculpture and memorial by August St. Gaudens and architect Stanford White. 
which still stands over her grave. Thank you for watching this week's episode, and don't forget to subscribe to see more from the annals of photography's dark history.